This is Elder Peter Ristow welcoming you to our October 30th, 2022 worship service at Warrington Bible Fellowship. Dr. Tyrone Champion of Ethnos College will be sharing a sermon on the peace of God. We hope that you'll be blessed in every way by this service. Well, I'd like to welcome Tyrone and Felicia Champion to our service today. I just recently met Dr. Champion uh, when he occupied the space upstairs in the townhouse with Ethnos College. Uh, you can read more about that at ethnos-college.org. Um, Dr. Champion has been a pastor for 25 years, and if you look, um, and, and mostly to the inner city, and if you look on that website, you'll see a whole list of things that he's done. There's more than I can say here. But let me say this, I've met many men of faith in my life. I've met fewer that have put such rich feet to their faith as has Dr. Champion. And I welcome you to our pulpit this morning, Dr. Champion. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here today. I would like to first thank uh, God for the opportunity uh, to be before you and for this invite to uh, just preach the word of God to you. I pray that my friend, uh, Pastor Kuvakis, gets well with his, uh, his tummy, his tummy tantrum. We'll be praying that God will bless him. But thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Uh, to the elders, all those that have uh, allowed me to be here today. And to my lovely wife, who joined me uh, this morning. Now, I heard a preacher say one time, uh, he was visiting my service, and he said, um, he said, I preach like this. The more you say amen, the faster I get done. <laughs> the less you say amen, it could be a while. <laughs> but I'm only teasing, amen. But today we want to share with you the word of God, uh, of what the Lord has placed in my heart uh, for you this morning. And uh, the word is, he gave me the peace of God, uh, the peace of God. And we hear that term a lot of times during Christmas in, in times of turmoil, times of challenges of life. Uh, but I want to just kind of share how God says it's just more expansive than just that. It's not something that we pluck out when we need it to put in us. We really have it in us all the time. So in my slide, The Peace of God, Peace can refer to a number of different situations. It, uh, there's world peace, which refers to the lack of conflict between nations. There is a interpersonal peace, which refers to a lack of conflict between individuals. There is a inner peace, which refers to the lack of conflict within a individual themselves. Between different desires and elements of their personality between his aspirations or her aspirations, uh, the reality confronts them when you have this inside warfare going on between you and yourself. But the most pressing need for any individual is to have the peace of God in them. Amen. Having that, thank you for that amen. So you're doing good, doing good already. So slide number two, I want to show you this. So it says, peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. The word peace in the Greek, the word means wholeness. It means uh, completeness. It describes God as not being partial or divided or separate. He is whole as an entity all by himself. So think about this now. You th think about that God in heaven is whole all the time. And what he did was he put that wholeness inside of us. And we have that peace 24-7 because why? Christ is in us. And when things on the outside try to affect that peace, that peace inside should repel it away because why? Christ is in us. And we have that peace. I like what he says here. Peace, peace was really, it, it was a common term by the, used by the Jews. And the Hebrew Jews, they said shalom. They, they come to their house, they say peace. 
They leave the house, they say, peace. It was common to them to say, peace be with you. We say peace now, but that was their normal thing. It was common for them to live in and out of God's peace all the time. This verse is connected to John 14, 1 and 3. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2 says, I go to prepare a place for you. That where you are, I'm going to come get you one day. Bring you back with me. But while I'm leaving now, I want you to have some peace. All right? I'm, I'm going to be gone for a little bit here, but have some peace. Now, look at this. I was studying this in the Greek. I like Greek, a little bit of Greek, and so I love it. So when he says, the, my peace I leave with you, the word leave in the Greek, it means that I'm going to depart, and I'm going to leave something with you to have, right? I'm leaving. I'm going to do a work. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to die for you. So while I'm gone, I'm going to give you this little, this little piece to hold on to because you're scared right now. You're fighting right now. Then he says this, and I give you my peace. So I said, Lord, why would Jesus say, I'm going to leave you peace? And then the next, next what, three, four words, say, I'm going to give you peace. Isn't that the same thing? He's going to leave you peace, and then I'm going to give. Isn't that the same? He said, no, 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 no. Look at, look at the definition. Leave means I give you. I'm, I'm going to depart something with you. But give means, in the Greek, I'm going to bestow a gift upon. I'm going to go pay the price, and when I die, I'm going to give you a gift of peace. A gift. It's already yours right now. Don't let a text, don't let a phone call, don't let an email interrupt your, interrupt your inside peace. We let one text, one phone call, one email. Oh, my God, Jesus, where are you at? You got peace. Right? Right? So he says, I'm going to give you this gift. And you're going to have it eternally. Because I'm whole, you shall be whole. Your, God, your job is going to be to guard your peace. Someone say, guard my peace. Right? You got to guard your peace because the enemy is constantly trying to take your peace from you. To disturb your inner peace. That's his job 24-7. That's his job 24-7. So be, be aware. Be, be, don't just think. Don't, see, let me tell you something. We are Christians. We are the devil's enemy. So his job is 24-7 to disrupt our lifestyle because he doesn't like us. And how could they attack us? Through our peace a lot of times. Through simple things. Amen. Through simple things that try to disrupt us. And so God sent me, little old me, to come tell you, keep your peace. Amen. I give you peace that no one, can't no man take your peace. Can't no woman, no job. Can't nobody take your peace. Can I get happy for a moment? Can't nobody take your peace. You're doing good, sister, all right? Because it's yours to have. Slide number three, please. The first prerequisite for peace is the consciousness or the harmonious and loving relationship between a person and God. In other words, you cannot have peace apart from Christ. Amen. You must have his peace inside of you to really understand the depth of peace. The peace of God, amen, is everlasting. It's eternal. The Bible says in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. In order to have the true peace of, of Christ, amen, it must be resident, living, alive, being born again, knowing, loving, worshiping him like today. That's the peace that you have all the time. Amen. When you sleep, you're at peace. You got peace. Come on. Some of you snore, you're snoring in peace right now. You don't even know it. You're snoring in peace at, the, at nighttime. Your wife hits you. She don't, you, can't, you don't even move. Why? Because you're in peace. We must have peace with ourselves. There must be no internal guilty conscience. There must be no inner schism, no fighting within ourselves, no unforgiveness of others. If your conscience is tormented with eternal or internal battles, it, it will attack you and destroy your peace that's in you. Unless we take Christ for our love, for the light of our minds, for the sovereignty, Almighty God wants to reside in us. He wants to heal the broken areas within us. 
See, we all have really, if you be honest, we all have internal battles. We all have inside conflicts. Amen. We all have, I don't care how old you are. Young, we all have these things that no one knows about but you and God. And you battle sometimes in the inside man saying, God, help me. God says, I got, I got you. I got you. You got peace. I got, it's going to be all right. And you may sit there and you may weep. You may, you may mourn. You may worry. He says, calm down. It's, it's all good. I got this. I got this. I got this. I think about the story in the book of first, uh, 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. The Shunammite woman, uh, uh, Peter, uh, she, she had, uh, when she was a barren woman, couldn't have a child, she meets Elisha, and, he, and she makes a little room for Elisha, and he sits there and he eats, and, and she, he asks her, what do you want? She says, I'm barren, I can't have a child. Elisha says, by this time next year, you're going to have a, a child. And she says, okay, okay. So one year later, I'm, I'm hurried up the story. He, she has a child. The child is born. The child grows up. But one day he dies. And when he dies, the woman, she lost her peace. So you would think. So you would think. Her child just died. So what does she do? She goes out to find Elisha. Gets on her mule. Amen. And she rides out to find Elisha. Husband says, where are you going? I'm going to find the man of God. He told me I was going to have a child. I'm going to find him. She rides and rides and rides. He finds Elisha. Elisha sees her afar off. And he says to, her, to his helper, his servant, he said, isn't that the woman that we prophesied to that she would have a child? And so he said, yeah, that, that's her. And so Elisha says to her, she says, is it well? She said, I, I, is it well? Look, look at the woman's peace. Her son is dead. But she says, it is well. It is well. Even though her son is dead, she still sp spoke life to her situation. And sometimes, friends, someone gives you some bad news or something happens in your life, we want to go into a pity party, we got to say, you know what? It is well. I don't know how God's going to fix it. I don't know how God's going to change it around. I don't know how God's going to turn But I, you know what? It is well. Because I had the peace of God, the Bible says, and all things, they work to what? Together for my good. And then, so she had the faith. She had the peace to say, you know what? It is well. Story says, he, he goes back with her, raised her son from the dead. Because you know what? It is well. Your faith must speak to every conflict in your life that it is well. Your faith must speak to every challenge in your life that it is well. I don't care who doesn't like you. I don't care at your, your job. I don't care, family. It is well because I serve a God that can't lie, that cannot fail, that will, that will take care of me. The Bible says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All by myself. Amen. Because we serve him like that. That's how we say We got we to gotta talk life. The Bible says that death and life is in the power of your tongue. Listen now, listen now. I got to hurry up. What you say is who you are. What you speak is who you are. Amen. Whatever you come out, come out your mouth, that's who you are. And so you got to have, have power to speak life to your situation, to speak life to your children, to speak life to your grandchildren, speak life to your job, speak life to your body. That power is in you to speak life to it because of Jesus Christ. Another element concerning true peace, which is again given by Christ, is peace with men. James said, which cometh wars and fighting amongst you from your lust, or to translate the old-fashioned phraseology into modern English, the reason why men are in antagonism with one another is the central thought or action of selfishness. We cannot let individuals try and take our peace. We can't let individuals we know that we're not or have an affinity with take our peace. They're there to make us stronger. Put us on our knees to pray that God give us strength and to help us be who we should be in God. Slide number four. 
Next part of the verse says, not as the world giveth. Note here, the world's gift of peace is an illusion. There's not peace, I'm sorry to tell you. You can't find peace in money. You can't find peace in possessions. You can't find peace in materialism. You can't even find peace in people. You got only can find peace in Jesus Christ. Amen. He, he is our peace. He says, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Uh-uh. Our Lord contrasts, as it seems to me, the world's peace with his peace. There is no comparison with the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Money will run out. Can I get an amen somewhere? You, sometime in your life, you will be broke as you grow in your life. Amen. You got to learn how to be broke and still love on Jesus. <laughs> amen. Amen. Learn how to be sick and still love on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And then other times you'll have plentiful. You have an abundance of finance, whatever it may be. We still love him anyhow. Why? Those things do not affect our peace because it is internal. It is unchangeable. It's unshakable. Hallelujah. Because when those things are gone, your peace goes with it. Philippians 4 and 11 through 13 says, not that I speak in respect regard to need, for I have learned in whatsoever state that I am to be content, Paul says. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. I can still have peace without finance. I can still have peace without possession. I can still have peace even though my body is racking with pain. I can still have peace because my peace is in internal and not external. Stop depending on things that can only give you a temporary peace but not the eternal peace. Slide number five. I'm almost done. Lastly, note the duty of the recipients of those that have Christ's peace. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And this topic here, this part here, is the application of peace. See, I think that God was just kind of talking, as I'm studying the word, and I'm, I'm, I'm praying about the word. The Lord is kind of just showing me that we have this peace without applying the peace. Not being applied to every area of our life. It's easy to apply peace when everything's going well, but when it's not, it's not applied properly. And so we want to apply the power of peace in our life. Our duty, according to Christ, is to let not your heart be troubled. In other words, don't let one text, I said this earlier, phone call, email, conversation, situation, trouble you. The background of the text is just before Christ is going to the cross and was to return. Amen. The disciples, they lost their peace. They've been with him for three, three, three years, and now the master was leaving, going to be gone. And they had that longing that he was going to be gone, and they grew up with him these three years. And now they, they lack that insight. He said, don't, he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't, don't let it be troubled. Don't, don't let it be dismayed. What are they going to do now? What are they going to do? Jesus assured them that I have said these things to you that in me ye might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. There you go, sister. I've overcome the world. I've, I've won the battle. I did the hard part. All right? All our job is to do is to walk into the blessing. Amen. I've done all the work. You don't got to fight. You don't got to worry. You know what you got to do? Just hit your knees and say, Jesus, I need you right now. He's already done the work. He's already went before you on the cross. He's already he done it all. See, the issue is, my sister, we try and do his job. He's already paid the price. All he's saying now, don't get dismayed. Don't get your heart. Just go ahead and believe me and watch me be God in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I, was, I remember one time I got a whole, I'm, I'm a faith man. I'm a faith man. I got a whole bunch of stories I can tell you 
that would kind of just blow your mind how God gave me peace and did just crazy things that you would not even believe. I told my lovely wife one time, we were living in Alaska, lived there 14 years, and David, and so I'm in Alaska, and I'm working at a bank, my wife and I, and we wanted to, to sell our house. I said, Lord, I want to be debt-free. Could I be debt-free? I want to be totally debt-free. I said to my wife, I believe in speaking things in the atmosphere. I said, Lord, I want to be debt-free in one year. I want everything paid off in one year. One year later, Peter, uh, but we were in our house in Alaska. My wife, my witness there, she's going to raise her hand. If I'm not telling the truth, she'll tell, I mean, she's going to tell me she's my witness. And a man comes to my house and knocks on the door. We didn't solicit. We didn't ask anything. The man said, I want to buy your house cash money. And he bought our house, and we paid every bill off that we had. We were totally debt-free in one year. Now, that was the good part. The bad part was, I didn't think ahead, where are we going to live after that? <laughs> and my, my wife would say, where are we going to live now? <laughs> Amen. So, you, you, so you, you don't get troubled. Amen. Don't, he already did the work. He already did the price. One more story for you. Amen. I'm a faith man. So I, told him, I said, you know what? I'm going to go on vacation, honey. This is probably 20 years ago. And we didn't have any money to go on vacation. We, had, we bought the tickets to go to Hawaii, wherever we were going. I forgot where it was. And so anyway, I said, well, I don't, I don't go on vacation, brother, with no money. That's not even fun. That's not fun. So we're a young couple, had young kids at the time. I said, I never go. I don't do that. I go with money to enjoy, have a good time. So we bought our tickets, but it had no spending money. I said, God of heaven, you said you own everything. I said, you got to give us some money to go on this trip. I said, we're leaving in one week, Lord. Right? I lose my peace. Tickets already bought. I said, God, you got to show yourself mighty. So you know what I did? I went to the store. You know, you, 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 here you have Giant. It's called Giant and Safeway. Over there in Alaska, it's called Cars. It's the same thing, just different name. And what I did by faith, you, I walked up and down the aisles looking for money. That sounds crazy, right? But faith does stuff like that. I walked up and down the aisles looking for money. I said, God, I don't have no way to get it. I work. I got a good job. But right now I'm strapped, but I need money to go. So I went down. Every day I went down the safe way looking for cash. Not begging. I just believed him. Monday came, I walked. Tuesday came, I walked. Wednesday came, I walked. Thursday came, I walked. And I'm leaving Friday. I said, goodness, I'm leaving tomorrow, Jesus. I go to my account to pay my bill for Friday before I go. And in my account, there was thousands, some dollars in my account. I said, where did this money come from? It was in my bank account. My wife said, don't spend it. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> God gave me that money because I didn't panic. I had faith. I didn't lack any peace. I take the money out the account. I sure, I, Diane, it was gone that same day. Pulled it out, went on the trip, came back. My wife said, we're going to get calls from the bank. We're going to get, we, I know they're going to say, where'd that money go to that it came out of nowhere? I ain't got a call, and that was 15 years ago. Because I believe him. He controls everything. He controls everything. I'm not just talking this to preach to you. I live this. I live this. I'm almost done. Can I give you one more story? You don't mind? I'm almost, I'm almost, yeah, if I, one, more, one more story. How many of you believe that you can control the weather? You don't believe that, do you? Yes. You can control the weather through God. If you ask him, to do something for you with the weather, he will do it. On three occasions at my, I've been past 25 years, we had a church picnic, and they said rain. They said, Pastor, you going to cancel? I said, we're not canceling. We're going to have the picnic right here at Crockett Park. It was rain that morning. It stops. We went out. We were having the picnic, and the rain came. 
And it rained everywhere around us, but not on us. I'm giving you some true life stories about peace that I've lived. I'm not perfect. No, I'm not perfect by any means. But I know who I serve. I know who he is. And God just simply tell you, don't get shaken. I got this. It is well. It is well. Let me, let me close out. First number, uh, slide six. I'm going to close out, sir. How do I obtain and grow in peace? I said this earlier, uh, uh, Romans 5 and 1, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Christ. Let me say something. Peace doesn't make sense sometimes. It doesn't make sense sometimes. What do you mean? I mean that sometimes they can't understand how you may have lost something valuable in your life and you still have joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. How, can, how is it that you, you, you know, something happened to you that really was really just uh, detrimental, but you still can smile? Peace does not make sense sometimes because the God in you, it, it overcomes the grief on the outside. It's greater than your grief, greater than your situation, greater than your problem. It doesn't make peace Sometimes the scripture says, even the book of Philippians, it says there, uh, it says the word of God says, the peace of God which surpasses all understandings will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace. That peace. That peace. All right, pastor. You done talked to me the last 25 minutes. How do I do this? How do I? have this application? How do I grow in my peace? First of all, let me give you a news flash. It's already inside of you. I said that earlier. Galatians 5 and 22 says that peace is one of the fruits of the Spirit. You already have it. It's already you. It's already there. But the issue we have is that it is not being utilized sometimes. Peace is also, the Lord showed me, it is progressive. You have a progressive peace, which means that the things that you go through now or before 10 years ago, as you grow in Christ, your peace should increase the handle of the trial you're going to face. See, I, see, things now that attack me way back in the day, 20 years ago, I've been saved 35 years, 30 years. Right? So that, when it attacks me now, it don't bother me. Why? I've grown in my peace. I've grown in my growth with God, so that thing won't, but now I have bigger things to handle with my peace. The issue we have sometimes is that the same thing still rattles our cage. Woo! Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Right? The same thing still shakes my bush. If the same thing that shook your bush five years ago still does it now, that means you have not grown in your peace. Because peace is progressive. It grows with you as you grow in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 and 18, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do I grow in peace? Two simple, two, two simple scriptures, I'm done. Psalms 119 to 165. Great peace have they that love thy law. And nothing shall offend thee. Right? Amen. Great peace have they that love thy law. And nothing shall cause them to stumble. So that means the more I get into the word of God, the more my peace grows. I'm just making it real simple right now. The more I read the word. See, we don't get that intake. The enemy comes in and he attacks you. Why? The intake, the word, it ain't there to fight him off. But great peace have they that love thy law. The when I read the word of God, I get more faith. And faith gives me more peace to combat and guard my heart against the attack of the devil. And I keep my peace. Psalms 26, I'm sorry, Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. 
when your mind is all over the place, when your mind is to and fro and up and down, not focused on the word or not focused on worship, not focused on, when it's all over the place that it should not be, you can lose your peace. But that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed. What thing is attacking you? What issue is trying to stir you? What problem keeps on? It's like a little, you ever, had, you ever been at your house and then fly, that fly come, and all you hear is that and you're like, I'm going to kill that fly, right? What, what thing is attacking your peace? What thing are you been praying to God for and it hasn't come to fruition yet? And you're saying, God, how long? Or God, when? That's why I came today to say, he got this. Just have some peace. He got it. He got you. He heard you. He heard you the first time when you prayed. But now I want you to have peace and rest in me. That's why I came today. That's because, you know, we have this. I've been in the church a long time like some of you have. And we come and we look good. Y'all look really good. But inside we got these things that we're battling in this old world. And so I came today to say, you know what? It's okay. Just have peace about it. Just rest in me and watch me do my work. Could be your child. Could be your grandchild. Could be your bodily health. Could be financial. Could be, I don't know, I don't know what it is. But the Lord is saying through me today, have peace. You've overcome the world. I got this. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you today for your great people. We thank you, God, for the word of peace. Lord, it means wholeness. It means not divided. It means not, not uh, in division, no schism. And, Lord, that peace is in us because you are whole, we are whole. And so today I pray for all of those in this building and watching us uh, online, God, that you would touch in the area that is divided, in the area that's being attacked by the adversary, the area, God, that they may feel uh, uh, insecure or not settled in or even under attack by the adversary. I pray today, God, you will give them your peace, that you will handle it, that you'll take care of it, that your God, you are El Shaddai, you are the Almighty, you are Elohim, you are El Rapha, you are our healer, you are El Nisan, you are our banner, you are El, El Tisikinu, Lord, you are righteousness, God, you are Imkadish, you are sanctifier, Lord, you are Shama, God, you're always there, you are God, you are Adonai, you are Lord all by yourself. Show them your power today. Show them, God, every attack against them, Lord, you will handle it and take care of it. And I, I'm praying, God, let's do it quickly. Show them that you are quick moving, God, Lord, even this week by your power. Now, we thank you and we bless you. We pray the peace of God be upon everyone hearing the, under my sound of my voice now. We ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Clap your hands and tell God thank you. <laughs>